is from campus to corporate leaders today's edition seamless navigation across sectors we have with us chondri makosh our alumni from the year 2011-13 and she's currently working in amazon let me introduce my co-host professor preeta singh who has a decade of experience in teaching and training soft skills and management communication. Chondrima, very big welcome to you once again. It's great having you on this platform. So please share your experience, rather your professional journey from campus placement at Bajaj Allianz General Insurance Company to your present organization, Amazon. Uh, thank you for the question, ma'am. And hello, everyone. As uh, ma'am introduced me, I'm Chandrima. I'm Chandrima Ghosh. I belong from Calcutta, the city of joy. And I was born in Calcutta. I completed my schooling from Calcutta, my graduation, and then my master's from ISBNM, International School of Business and Media. I was from 2011-13 back. And once I completed my course, I got placed in Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. This was my campus placement. So I got placed in Bajaj Alliance as an executive training. And then after three months of training, I will be, uh, I will be confirmed and my role will be as an account manager. So in this period of three months where the company will train me and give me a holistic idea about how the business works, how the general insurance industry works. And this is in this training period is basically known as a honeymoon period for most of the companies. So here you can actually learn a lot of things and you will not be encountered for any targets or anything. But my piece of advice to everyone is to treat this period very seriously because here you can ask any question to anyone and everybody is liable to answer you that. And at the end of the day, you're not responsible for any targets. So the learning will be immense in this period. And I took this training period very seriously. And I got an overall idea about how the insurance company works, what is the insurance form, how a policy is issued, what is discount, what is loading, and finally, how a person can claim in the insurance policy. So seeing my hard work and efforts, I got a piece of recognition from my branch manager in the training period itself that they were very happy to see that I have taken this training so seriously and I have really got a very good idea about the overall structuring of the business. And then I remember that once my training was over, I got placed in travel insurance. So travel insurance is a very integral part of the insurance company. So here what happened, my friends, that if any person is traveling abroad for vacation, for any official trip or for education purpose, like any trip to abroad can be covered via insurance, like your luggage can be covered, your health can be covered. So I was placed in this department. So being in this department, my role was to uh, achieve my targeted sales number. At the same time, I have to onboard new agents and clients, which will be my potential customers from the next month onwards. So it was two things, new tie-up and targeted sales. So when you uh, like onboard some new agents, travel agents, like big, big companies, like my trip, FOCC, Thomas Cook, you will have to uh, go into the legal formalities and make them sign legal agreements. So when I was onboarding them and like signing those kind of legal agreements, I really developed a lot of uh, interest into the legal terminologies, like what are what is the commission or, or what is the assignee, what is the affiliate, everything. And from this part, I got motivated to my present role, like from this legal thing, uh, which I am doing now. So yes, and when we onboarded the agents, we also had to train them. Like, for example, I had some 35 agents under me. So I couldn't be available in front of everyone at the same time, but we cannot lose business out of it. So I have to equip them with all necessary documents, data, knowledge, which will help them to convert a sales into a final sale and issue the policy, hand over the policy documents and collect the payment or check. So uh, this actually helped me in increasing my communication skills and polishing myself 
and also how you handle various kind of agents and clients so this increased my communication capability skills and uh, doing this uh, there were some times in my life i remember that when i was very new to this job role there were times when i tripped off target like 10% i couldn't meet or maybe 15% i couldn't meet so then i thought that like how will i make it up what fund that can be there so that you know i can manage it because my manager will ask come and question me that you know why you are falling short of 10% then i came up with a new logic you can say a new funda that is if i by chance trip out of my 10% target then i will make new tie ups that month more i will onboard new agents so that when my manager comes and question me that you know why you are not able to achieve this number then i said i said him that uh, See, sir, I couldn't do this because of the market condition. It was bad. It was not very good at that point in time. But yes, I onboarded many new clients, many new agents. This will be my potential business for next month. And he was quite satisfied with my logic. And uh, so, what I learned from here, and or what my learning is, is that in sales or in marketing, whenever you fall short of anything, or suppose. A is not working for you. Then always try with logic B, or it's A B, or combination of both A and B. So, I mean, um, more than logic, it's the effort, right? Correct. It's the effort. You will have to achieve your numbers, but there can be some times when you can fall short because you 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 constantly have to handle a lot of pressure because sometimes even what happens, you book a sales, but the check will bounce. The customer's check will bounce. so in that case it is not your fault if the customer is not having sufficient balance in his account and if the check bounces for example it is not your fault but you will fall short of target so in this kind of scenario you will have to act a bit smart from your mind and come up with new logic but at the end of the day it is your hard work which will matter so you have to always keep on learning new things because sales is a continuous process Here you will have to continuously learn new things, new techniques, new communication skills, which will help you to communicate with your end customer, and you can uh, like lure him and close the sales. So for me, what is important is that learning is very important. You should be always keen to learn new things, but at the same time, you should be flexible enough to unlearn what you have learned and relearn new things. so this process of learning unlearning and relearning is very important in your corporate journey so i was very um, successful in the travel insurance part and i was achieving my numbers but yes sometimes i tripped out maybe once or twice and this logic helped me and then i got posted to bank insurance so it was a horizontal uh, promotion for me you can say i got shifted to bank insurance it was a different segment of uh, insurance business so in this business what happens insurance companies are tied up with various banks and non banking financial institutions so i was looking up to bajaj fintech it is a nbfc a uh, non banking financial institution so whenever you will go to take a loan uh, like you are taking any kind of a personal loan a home loan or loan against share properties anything then bank will push a uh, insurance with that and sometimes the customer wants the loan so desperately that he is in need of the loan so he will not even know that what insurance is being sold so that is a very good amount of business for the insurance company but here where is my company's ethics like bajaj i'm talking about because i was posted in bfl bajaj films of limited and here my main target was to achieve my targeted numbers but at the same time i had to keep a very close eye that no kind of miss selling was taking place if a customer is taking a policy then the customer should be well aware that what policy it is and what are the benefits from the policy or suppose if any claim happens then how will the customer claim from the policy so i made sure that i met all the individual customers one by one when they were coming to fill up the loan document and explain them that this is the insurance which you are getting it with the loan and these are the benefits out of it so this gave me a very uh, 
good peace of mind like i am actually helping someone to know what you are getting in all otherwise they, they will just not be interested in knowing only because for them the loan matters so here i was not doing any kind of unethical job and at the same time i did not allow the bank people also to do it so it was very clear from our side that you have to explain the benefits and once the customer agrees once the customer signs the form then only the insurance will be sent to the customer will be pushed to the customer so yes this was a very good thing which i was doing and my company was supporting with me in that totally and while working on uh, bfl bajaj friends of limited um, i was handling the insurance but at the same time i learned a lot of uh, new things in bfl like what is a kyc uh, know your customer which we tell like no uh, tell it now that what is a kyc so if a customer is advanced wanting a loan or advancing for a loan what is the credit eligibility what is the civil score so again i got a brief idea about the finance part also working here yeah. as my major was both the marketing and finance in isvnm so i had some idea like about the finance part and i got a very good overview with how a financial institution works so again i learned a lot of new things from bfl like the terminology regarding the credit risk and analysis so here there was a twist in my career and i thought that now it is time for me to again upskill myself or reskill myself so i was doing sales and now i thought it is time for me to move my base from sales to the digital part of marketing so i took up a course in digital marketing where i got to know a lot of uh, new things regarding the digital part of marketing about uh, email marketing uh, social media marketing seo and etc 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 so this actually helped me and gave me a holistic view of what marketing is and there was a time and in this time also there was a big swing in my personal life i got married and i was shifting to bangalore so here i interviewed for a company called amazon and i got the job so i was so happy that in a new city i'm getting a new job so it was a very good experience for me and presently in amazon i'm working as a senior risk analyst so here i look about the affiliate marketing business so it is an online form of marketing in amazon so if you ask me what is affiliate marketing then i can tell you we all have our social media handles like we all have our facebook accounts instagram accounts twitter accounts and you know some of us are very interested in blogging also like they run their own website they have their own blogging site so anybody who has a good fan following base or a good content in their website and want to monetize their site so what they can do is that they can sign up for the amazon affiliate program and here in this program once they are onboarded then they can showcase or advertise amazon products in their website in their social media handles and if any customer goes and purchases from that link then the person will be paid a small amount of commission so this thing looks and uh, looks very really simple to all of us like i i said it very simply right you can just go join and if anybody buys you will get the commission now to enter into this program also there are lots of terminologies and clauses by amazon so you can say basically i'm working here as a watchdog or a gatekeeper of the affiliates who are getting onboarded into the program like i have to look after their content their website is the content fine in nature is there any kind of abusive language or the website is having any kind of nudity pornography or explicit content are they um, violating any kind of amazon trademark so these are a few things which i need to keep a close eye on and if they are not surviving by the rules and regulation provided by the amazon in their sign up details page then we will not allow them for the program so my job not only ends over here i'm also responsible like for i need to keep a close eye to this fraud part like fraud part when i say there are already some kinds of affiliates who are in the program who are already making money out of amazon affiliate program so i will have to keep a close eye on them that whether they are doing any kind of fraudulent action and making money out of it or they are tweaking amazon policies and rules and making money out of it now that is illegal that is not allowed 
So here basically I'm looking after the content part also while onboarding new clients, uh, affiliates to the program. And also I'm looking in the fraudulent part also for the affiliates to sustain in the program, they will have to adhere by certain rules and regulation and they cannot defraud or fraud Amazon and make money. So this is my main job and I'm analyzing the risk out of it. So that is why my job role is senior risk analyst. Well, it sounds very interesting, you know, especially when you talk about, you know, you identify fraudulent activities and you act like a gatekeeper. Yeah. Sounds as if you're, a, yeah. you're an investigator or kind of a sleuth. So, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's an investigator kind of, kind of thing. Right. So uh, could you share a couple of anecdotes or interesting stories from that part of your job role? Uh, okay, yeah, I have uh, like, I came across a lot of experiences, but I will share like two or three of them uh, with you now and with everybody. So what happens is that I'll give a small example, like there are various deals and discounted with Amazon games like Prime Day, Diwali Dhamaka, Independence Day offer. So here you can get a lot of things that are very discounted rate, like you can get an iPhone for a discount of 10-20% from the market price. So our motive, like Amazon's motive is that you can enjoy those discounts, but not make profit out of it. So you cannot buy 10, 20 iPhones uh, from Amazon and sell it outside because there will be always restriction in the number of stocks or the number of units that you can buy. So there are always some people who have a fraudulent mindset. What they will do is that they will do random signups with different kind of email IDs. And uh, they will try to fraud our system and buy quantities in bulk and then sell it outside. So to stop this kind of fraudulent activities and to catch hold of this kind of uh, random sign up, uh, me in association with this technical team have launched a new system. So I have designed the SOP for the system. So that system will try to find out relations between different kinds of random signups and fraudulent activities and give the data to us so that we can further analyze whether these customers are actually frauding Amazon or not. So when a system Your sound is off. Hello? Yeah, yes. It's back. It's yeah. Back. Sorry. So You're when a system is you were talking about how you can spot the fraudulent activities. You can spot one a person yeah. using different email. How do you do that? Is there a special program uh, to spot yeah. that? So, correct. So what happens? Uh, we have actually launched a system for it. So we named the system to be system Boom Cash. I have suggested the name to be Boom Cash because how Boom is a very famous. Yeah, it's a very famous Bengali character, like a detective thing. And when I, I suggested this name, I gave the notion behind it that why I am suggesting this name because uh, this is a detective character. In our system was also like the same, like detecting the kind of fraudulent activities. And uh, now this name is uh, taken by everybody worldwide, like Amazon.com, .ca, .fr. System Bomkesh is like a superhero in front of everybody and this project is global accredited so one system <laughs> thank you so what system gomkesh will do is that it will try to detect the frauds between different accounts and try to identify random sign up so i can give one example i i will not go too much into details but one example i can give that is suppose you're signing up with um, xyz1 at rate of gmail.com but your mentality is to fraud. So what you will do xyz2 at rate of gmail.com, xyz3 at rate of gmail.com. So here when Bomkesh will come into play and will derive the relations between three between the three email IDs, all these are same. So this means the end user is same. So in this way, we mix and match, we draw lines between the relations and try to find out the fraudulent activities to the system Bomkesh. Wow, it's like almost, you know, like keeping a third eye on the uh, fraudulent activities, like uh, uh, from the Correct. point of view. And you say that. Yeah, so talk. Yeah, it is globally accepted. It is being followed in all marketplaces in India, in .com, in .ca, FR, DE, everywhere. So, so you spoke program, about third eye. A program yeah, made by you, which has a global acceptance. I think that's a great achievement. 
yeah really that was a great milestone for me in my career in amazon and like i was highly appreciated by all my peers my colleagues my managers my skip level managers everybody so it was really a very big milestone for me to achieve and talking about the third eye which you said we also had a project named third eye so oh, the notion it? behind so who named that <laughs> yeah Yeah, I only that. named that. It was a follow-up for Bomkesh. <laughs> so, like when uh, this project was being launched, so they all asked me, "Do you have any suggestion for this? Any any new kind of name?" I said, "Yeah, why don't we name it that as a third eye?" So basically, when I have meetings and discussion with this kind of project, it's it's mainly the onshore people, like in US, Canada. So they don't know like what is a third eye. So they ask, "Why you are uh, naming it as a third eye? What is the notion behind it?" So I said them it's a notion because you know in India all the gods and goddesses have a third eye. With their third eye, they can see all the bad things which are happening around us, and they can take account of it that uh, they can destroy all the bad things which is happening around us. So this project will also be the same. It will uh, find out all the nitty gritties and detailings of uh, the relations or the fraudulent activities which are going on. or any kind of illicit content which is there in anybody's site so again this um, project is a man driven project this is a manual project and i am in charge of this project i am doing it so here we have to manually detect the fraud again there is a huge set of data which is collected by system boom cash and we have to go through the data analyze the data you know just just go through very carefully that we shouldn't miss miss any part of it and again we will try to find out relation that how accounts are related and how people is trying to fraud amazon and our main duty is not allow not to allow anybody to fraud amazon or tweak amazon's enforcement policies so these are the two interesting projects uh, which i had to say about uh, my um, journey in amazon like there are quite a few but this was the biggest two in my career and uh, this actually gave a lot of boost to my like uh, my success in the store i'm sure i'm sure and uh, you were talking about uh, your need or your desire uh, for upskilling and reskilling and how you picked up uh, legal affiliation or you know your affiliation for uh, legal documentation and you mm-hmm. put it to practice later on in your career so uh, mm-hmm. our question is how has isbn them uh, prepared you or facilitated your growth and has and has it instilled the need for upskilling and reskilling and how has it uh, been a force for you to grow in your career <laughs> thank you thank you so much for this question this question is very important to me because isbm plays a very pivotal role in my life and it has really scaled me a lot to climb this corporate ladder it will equip you with all the necessary you know strength stamina and knowledge etiquette manners everything so um, to start with you know when i joined isbm and then like started with a band the orientation program i thought like 9 o'clock to start 4 o'clock 5 o'clock it will get over i'll go home and you know i'll take rest but it took 12 hours like from morning 9 to like 9 9 pm or maybe till 10 o'clock if i'm not wrong so that gave me a fair idea that where am i now and how will it continue to be for 2 years so it was very difficult for me to adjust in that 5 days because i was never adjusted to sit like for 12 hours and attend any kind of webinar or seminar or to listen any speaker speaking in front of us for 12 hours so that is itself a training because in corporate or in uh, in your offices there will be training for 9 hours 10 hours and you will have to listen to them so this will actually help you this actually helps us or everybody to get adjusted with that corporate culture because sometimes in training you know uh, you will have to present you will have to listen you will have to ask questions so you need to be attentive all the time you cannot miss out any point in your trading part and especially in fields like marketing training is very important it will give you a very holistic idea about the product so if you don't know your product then how will you pitch it to the customer 
So yes, in ISBNM, this was a very good thing which I learned or like, like everybody is learning, all our budding managers is learning that how to take new things and keep calm in the 12 hour slot. You need to be calm, composed and your mind needs to be working. Like your mind should be on, your mind shouldn't freeze. So that you will learn. And the next thing, uh, which is very interesting and uh, I feel that uh, we all are learning or have learned, that is our guest lectures. So it took place like in very odd timing at night at uh, sometimes it ended in the morning, like morning 3 a.m. it got over. So we used to question that, uh, like, why is it so? We have to go home. How will we go home? We will not get bus from Chinar Park. What is this? We will catch hold of everybody. But now here we, in your company or in, presently in any kind of this job thing, you will not have the uh, opportunity to ask question also why is it's happening and you will have to attend it. There is no why if Kintu Parantu, nothing. It's on and you will have to do it. Your manager will call you somewhere at 10 o'clock at night and tell the Chandrima, you know, I need this report. So despite of the fact that however busy you are, wherever involved you are, you will have to do it. You cannot say no always. Yes, you can give an excuse for once if you're not well. But at the end, if you want to be successful in your life and climb the ladder of success, then you will have to put your 100% into that work. And then time is not a constraint. Time, you cannot see what time it is or how long I'm working. You have to work. And you have to motivate and you have to get motivated to work. And lastly, I can recall that, you know, when we submitted assignments and projects, we were uh, put into different groups. So sometimes our professors were kind enough to give us the liberty to form groups, you know, and we formed with our friends whom we were very comfortable working with. And sometimes we will select groups, right? like they will see, uh, put random numbers on two, three, four, five, and all one have to work together, all two have to work together. So in those kind of things, it was not easy for us because so we were not comfortable working with people whom we are not so friendly with. With, with whom we did not go for lunch breaks and chai breaks. We were not really comfortable working with them. That thing was not there. So here, uh, when we are in office, you will have to work with any XYZ people whom you haven't seen in your life. So that uh, project thing actually gave us a glimpse of teamwork, that what teamwork is and what is actually uh, your contribution in the project or how will you stand out and help your members to stand out in a project when you don't know each other or when you're not comfortable working with each other. So teamwork is very important in corporate life, in corporate world. If you want to work far and if you want to achieve and go to a long distance, then you have to move with your team. You cannot go individually. Yes, individual contributions are important, but teamwork works wonders. So this project part actually taught us what teamwork is and how can we achieve a lot from it. So these are just a few uh, things which I mentioned, but actually there are lots and lots of it. Thank you, Chandrima. I think uh, you've mentioned some of the very key uh, elements that ISBNM believes in, you know, integrating mm -hmm. campus life with industry. Correct, correct, yeah. And that, that's very important. So you were talking about, you know, putting in long hours. How long do you work now? <laughs> I generally end up working somewhere around 10 to 11 hours. Or my, it stretches up to 12 hours also in times of time, day and uh, all those things. That is incredible. And I, I believe you're working from home now? Yeah, we are, I'm like, we all are working. I'm working from home now. So because you, of this pandemic, like it's work from home. Right. So you're putting in... 12 hours at a stretch in front of a computer, I mean, it must be uh, stressful for you. So, and I believe you also are a mother and uh, to a very young child. So how do you balance? Yeah, those correct. Things? How do you keep your mind and body fitness uh, in sync with your professional goals? It is actually, health? yeah, it is actually difficult, like to be very honest. I really try to maintain a holistic work life and family life balance. I end up also being successful at some point in time, but sometimes the work takes over everything. 
but yes uh, you know to as i'm a new mother my son is actually very small he's 17 months old and i have to continuously struggle between motherhood my professional career and my work life balance so what i do is that what i feel is that that sometimes you should just unplug yourself from the rest of the world and take some me time so in my me time i like doing yoga i try to get up early in the morning i try to do a bit yoga and one more important thing which i follow is that i try to i i meditate every day if i miss doing yoga also i will meditate 10 minutes before i go to bed so that will completely detox all the negative energies which are there and the the screen light which is continuous in your eyes it will just de-stress you and you will be in a better state of mind and from tomorrow you can again you know start your fight with everything so again i i take a piece of job which i love and that is baking so baking really gives me a lot of uh, happiness because my son is fond of cooking and the uh, small small pastries so i really love baking and i try to make out uh, cookies for him we don't end up buying cookies but i make up cookies for him so that he can have a lot of homemade food healthy food and yes uh, it is it is also distressing me again i i just love doing that and also when i have free time i play with my son and his smile is enough for me to distress all my stress i'm sure yes, chandrima i have a question for you for you this question is yes, from ma'am. dr uh is from dr ghosh who is the director of uh, isbn kolkata he has says okay a uh, which module of supply chain has been followed by delightful delightful especially in the last year i'm sorry ma'am which is there anything of that you chain? know of that they have a model um, or a change that they have made to their supply chain mm-hmm. which has made the customer experience more, more delightful in the last year would you know about it in amazon yes in amazon right yeah so uh, to answer sir's yes. question i will tell that uh, when you are purchasing any product from amazon then uh, they will tell you that uh, if you want if you are a prime customer then you will get the product tomorrow uh, if you are not a prime customer you will get it after two days one uh, interesting thing which they made uh, made a change in supply chain was that they have added stores so now there is a option when you take a product that you will have a option to go and collect it from a store which is near to you so suppose you are ordering a baby food or a baby toy online so there will be delivery date and at the same time you will be given an option that there is a store some 2 to 3 kilometers near you are you interested to go and pick it up from there if yes then there is a 50 rupees discount in it so this is actually saving the delivery time and the customer is going himself and picking up the item and also it is giving business to the store and amazon is also making profit out of it so i believe that this is a very integral change in the supply chain because uh, you know the stocking of items which are there in the warehouse that is also going down because actually now those items are being stocked up in those stores too so this is actually saving a lot of space in our warehouse and making space for more important or integral items which are uh, like uh, like needed so that was a very good step and initiated by initiated by amazon and i feel that uh, this this actually changed the supply chain model also because you know a lot of space was getting emptied in our warehouse and uh, they could actually utilize that space for something more important Thank you for that answer, Chandima. I hope that answers your question, Doctor Ghosh. Do you have any other questions? Uh, this is for all who are present today in the webinar, all the attendees and the panelists. You are free to ask Chandima any question. But before that, uh, please refer to the link that has been posted in the chat box. This link is for people who would like to have a certificate of the webinar that they have attended. please go to the link register yourselves enroll your names and your email address and other details that needs to be followed and in the end you will 
be entitled for a certificate which will be mailed to you at the email address provided. So once again, the attendees and the panelists are requested to please go to the link, register yourselves for an online certificate from ISBNM. And again, a reminder to all the attendees today, we have with us Chandrima Chandrima Ghosh, who is a senior risk analyst at Amazon, and she is here to answer any questions that you might have, any insights that you're looking for, any advice that you would need, any anxiety that you would like to get a sale, please feel free to ask her and I'm sure she will answer to her capacity. Okay, Chandrima, I have a question for you. You mentioned earlier that you had a dual mm -hmm. specialization when you were in college, which is something that we still mm -hmm. adhere to. So you had marketing yeah. and finance. Now, how has this, yeah. how has the dual specialization helped you in your career? Okay, that's a very good question. So knowing more is always good, I feel. So uh, when uh, you are working in any company or in any job role, then there is uh, no set job criteria. Like they will give you a rough area that these are the do's which you have to do. But again, if you go ahead and do something which is not in your job role, then you will be definitely appreciated. And that is the term which is called thinking out of the box. So uh, in here, uh, when I am also having idea about this finance part also, and I worked in BFL also, that also, you know, enhanced my knowledge about these financial things. Now in Amazon, when I'm working, there is a small part payment. We handle a small part called payment. When we are paying out those commissions to our affiliates. So in the payments part, I actually have to utilize a lot of the financial things like what, how much is counts and tax part. So the taxes vary from countries to countries. In US, the tax structure is different. In India, it is different. In Canada, it is different. So, you know, I had a basic knowledge of it or I had, I, I did the course, I had a knowledge out of it. But yes, for so long, I was not in touch with the books. I had to again rebrush my concept. But yes, the idea was very clear to me when I was in my college and that was there in my mind. So it helped me to again adapt those things and uh, refresh my knowledge and uh, uh, suggest new ways of uh, calculating commissions and you know the payment structuring in my new role. So when I'm telling that I'm working here as a risk analyst, analyzing the risk part is my main job. But yes, I have to do some subsidiary work also, like handling the payments queries from the affiliates. Like why uh, my tax structure, my I, I did not receive my commission. If, if a person is asking, affiliate is asking why I did not receive my commission, or I received less, the tax percentage is this much, then I should have that knowledge where I can calculate the tax percentage, the commission, the discounts, the uh, giveaways, takeaways, everything, and give an answer to him. Now for that, I needed an idea in finance and which I already had it from my college. So yes, uh, what I feel ma'am over here is that uh, you should always keep on learning. If you don't know also, then also you should try to know. I am a non-technical person here and I had no idea about the technicalities like what is Java, what is Python. But yes, working in this team with the technical team, I had to develop an idea. Because when I am launching a project, then I should know a little bit about it, the little bit technical part of it. So the dual specialization really helped me in my career. And it is helping me now also when I'm handling this commission part, tax part, because this is not marketing. This is a complete financial thing. And we have a financial team to look at it. But the initial query comes to me. So I have to eliminate how much ever I can, and which I can't, I will have to transfer them to the financial experts. But yes, I try to eliminate the queries and answer them how much ever I can. And that helps me a lot. My college and the dual degree helps me a lot in that. Okay. We have a question from Professor Ashish Mitra of the Calcutta campus. Uh, Dr. Professor Mitra would like to know, do you have to liaison with the legal department in case of errant or fraudulent customers? Uh, do I have to or uh, what? 
do you have to liaise with the legal department in case of errant or fraudulent customers? Do you have to liaise yes, with the legal work. department? Yeah, so we are working very closely with the legal department. Like we are uh, working very closely with the Indian legal department also and the US legal department also. So uh, when any customer is trying to defraud Amazon, then the first initial warning which we give them that you will not be eligible for any kind of commission. And like whatever commission is pending, we will just like uh, close their account and not pay them. But if still we see that the customer is going again uh, uh, against us and launching a case, sometimes the customers, it happens especially in US. In India, this kind of scenario doesn't arise that customer is going against Amazon and filing a complaint and, or FIR that, uh, you know, Amazon is not paying my commission, my hard-earned money. Indians don't do that. Like, I never came up with a scenario, but in US, it is very common. So, yes, we have to uh, work very closely with the legal team and supply them with all the facts and data that uh, this customer is the fraud. And these are the fraudulent things which they have done. They have done cookie stuffing or like they have done personal orders or uh, they have not abided by the Amazon's policy. So we have to prepare this document and provide it to the legal team so that they can go ahead and submit in the court that these are the facts and statistics of the customer that he have frauded Amazon by so many different accounts. And these are the money which have already taken by frauding Amazon. And now we have stopped him and stopped his commission. So yes, we are working in lives with the legal team and collaborating with them in a very close manner to help them to submit all the evidences and data facts which is required against any kind of fraudulent activity. Great, great. That's a wonderful answer, Chandrika. Now we have another question for you, which is okay. obviously you have inspired people to ask you questions. This question says, how does one self-motivate through the ups and downs in a corporate life? Because you have good times, you have bad times, but how do you keep motivating yourself? And this question is from Moon Himoy, if I'm not mistaken. Moon Himoy, yes, that's right. That's one of our attendees. Okay, uh, thank you for this question. And I would like to tell you that you should never stop uh, motivating yourself because if you motivate yourself and stand up after falling down, then you have already won the battle. And my friend, winning every or individual battle is not important winning the war is important so get ready for that buckle up and never fall down so i can't recall an incident uh, that you know uh, when uh, when i uh, shifted my base from calcutta to bangalore i was um, having a setback the setback was a linguistic barrier in in bangalore uh, if you if you want to be in marketing in sales you will have to know the local language and for some days, I worked in Bajaj also in Bangalore. I took I worked in Bajaj and then I moved to Amazon. So uh, I was uh, very afraid that, you know, how will I do? I'm falling back. If I'm going to any local customer, they're talking to me in Canada. Okay. But then I motivated myself that people are learning French. People are learning Spanish. People are learn, uh, learning so many languages. Why can't I learn Canada? And I started learning Canada and I started understanding what the person is saying in front of me, like little bit, little bit, I started understanding. Gothila means yes. So, okay. So when he's telling me something, I said, okay, okay, Chana Gothila, Chana Gothila means I understood. So whenever I said this much, the person in front of me got very happy. See, see this girl, she is not from our native and she's learning to, she's trying to learn our language. They got very happy. And if they didn't want the product also, they will take it because they got so happy that I'm, I'm trying to make an effort. So see, my friend, I could have not learned that language. That was not a hard-on foundation that I would have to learn it. But yes, I learned it because, because it facilitated in my growth. And I was happy learning it. So if you feel that uh, you're not able to do something, then you're completely wrong because the word impossible itself is impossible. So you are capable of doing anything. It is just that you need to motivate yourself. And if you fall also, then learn to stand up and you can achieve anything. That's very inspiring. I think uh, the other thing that came out from that answer is that 
if you start believing in yourself and if you start pushing yourself there will be rewards correct right? there will be rewards for a small step there will be a big uh, reward and that will help your uh, journey your uh, effort and it will catapult you to uh, motivate yourself and grow correct. more i believe yeah so i would uh, like to add a small point over here ma'am so what i feel is that our life is like a pizza like we all love pizza so our education is the pizza base so this is what we know so if you only eat the pizza base will you like it you will never like it so you need good amount of toppings in it so what are those toppings your extra skills and your extra curriculum and what efforts you are taking to upskill yourself that are those toppings again for the pizza to be more tasty you need a lot of cheese so again this small small thing like the example i gave chana gotila i i learned that language so this is the cheese in it so for a pizza to be tasty you need a good bread the toppings and the cheese so you need your knowledge you need to upskill and you need to continuously learn and do such small small things and think out of the box then definitely will be successful Now that is immensely profound advice that you have given, not only to us but I think to any of the young people who are watching thank this you, this webinar. Thank you, thank you. Now I don't know whether you remember, but Nelson Gomes, one of yeah, our alumni. Now he That's, has a question for you. He has a question for you. How is Amazon coping with the competition in the Indian market? especially from the big big players like flipkart see amazon is at number 1 amazon doesn't need to compete with flipkart <laughs> flipkart needs to compete with amazon <laughs> but still i will answer that question that amazon is the market leader like we do and people follow so we are not in the position that we need to compete with anybody we are setting examples and uh, and there are so many kinds of different programs and discount offers then ever you will like the concept for amazon is like a m a z o n so from a to z there is a arrow if you see there is a smiley from a to z so here the idea is that in amazon from a to z everything is available so then if you are planning to buy something for your home or like a phone or anything the first thing which will come to your mind is okay i will check in amazon now you saw the price when will you go to flipkart when you will want a price competitiveness yes ma'am no so you carry on chandrika carry on okay okay yeah. so when uh, looks like so for example you are seeing a product in amazon now when will you uh, go to flipkart when you will have a when you will want to see a price competitiveness that whether this price is competitive with flipkart or not and if, if i'm getting the same product in flipkart in a lesser price then i will go and take it from flipkart but in amazon we are so much aware of this that we will not let our customers to site hop Uh, we will instantly give you so many offers for different cards for different discounts cashbacks and etc uh, etc et that you will definitely find some good offers here only and you will not have to site hop to any other uh, <laughs> e-commerce site now we have a very uh, important question from a young okay. person named devanjun chakraborty who wants to know mm -hmm. who says I am very eager to study MBA, but my English speaking mm -hmm. power is not so fluent. So, please okay. suggest me some ways to develop the skill. And how important is it to know English fluently? Uh, Devanjan, uh, like uh, firstly, I would like to clap for you that you said that you are not actually good in English and you want to. learn that skill set now everybody is not that uh, uh, open enough to accept about it but you have actually said it and uh, i would really appreciate it but my friend i would like to tell you that english is actually very important in corporate world but don't feel demotivated or don't think that you cannot do it english is just a language why can't you speak you can definitely speak it so i would like to say that in your home if you are talking in bengali 
try to talk in english stand in front of the mirror and speak english or the best thing is that um speak and record so uh, when you will record and when you will hear that you can definitely find the flaws in it and you can mark down that in this points i was missing and you can improve that and when you will be an isbnm like if you enroll your, yourself in this college then there there are so many soft skills classes which will given to you like we have brita ma'am you know she is a superb teacher if you study under her then <laughs> you will definitely you can overcome and be a master in this language so english is just the language my friend and it is important in corporate world but you can learn it people are learning germany people are learning french i have also done my a1 level in french i have completed my a1 level in french in this pandemic so i was thinking that i should take advantage of this pandemic and i should learn some new language so when i i can learn french like bonjour good morning why can't you learn english and say good morning simply it is very easy you can definitely learn it and like if you get admitted in this college there are so many faculties so many soft skill classes they will scale up you i will upskill you and like help you to conquer this language so don't get demotivated or don't feel shy you have spoken about this this is so commendable but you can definitely learn and you can help yourself by reading newspapers books and talk record listen write down what flaws again talk record in this time i'm sure that definitely you can have a good grasp over the language nelson go says that you have given him the perfect answer and thanks you for it <laughs> thank you nelson <laughs> uh i would like to make another uh, announcement regarding the certification the link is there for all in the chat box please enroll yourselves fill in the details and the certificate will be mailed to you at the email address that you register so do not delay please fill in the form and get yourself enrolled for a certificate from ISBNM you know i had i have a question for you on behalf of students and i'm sure this is something that they okay. all want to know most of them okay. are naturally nervous when they go for their interviews now you mm -hmm. have been for a number of interviews you've got your you went for an interview for your internship then you went for mm -hmm. one for your placement and then you have changed jobs so you have sat for a number of interviews now what would be your okay. advice to the young students who will be sitting for their interviews in a year or two what are the key things or the, which is the magic key to cracking an interview uh the most important thing that you should be very confident on your domain knowledge there you cannot do any kind of manipulation your knowledge should be very clear about your subject the first thing and the second thing is that when you go for an interview you have to in an interview what we are trying to do we are trying to sell ourselves to the interviewer the interviewer should like our knowledge the way of communication the presentation then only they will take us so just imagine that if you are uh, going to buy something then you will buy the good thing which you like so the same is with interview when the interviewer comes they will look for the best candidate and you should be able to showcase that skill set now for that if you be nervous that will not be entertained you cannot be nervous you will have to be calm composed sometimes if you don't know a an answer also like uh, don't get nervous and you know you're sweating and just rubbing like this don't do all this just to smile and say that uh, i am not sure of it maybe uh, it, like i don't know it sir can you ask something else so be very calm composed and you know that the big smile it should be your usp don't get nervous don't start stammering be very calm and and yes your domain knowledge that should be very perfect if there is any kind of gd like uh, which you have to crack or you are in a group discussion then uh, then you should always try to start the gd and end the gd if you do that uh, you will be in limelight and uh, i i remember uh, nicely that uh, when we were in college to crack this gd so uh, there were many tips which were given given to us so one of the most important tip was that you should start a gd 
And when you start a GD, you will have to tell that I have three points. When you say this, when people have to wait for your three points, they can't cut you short. So these are the small tips and tricks which, which you should learn from your professor. They will uh, surely tell you that these are the interview hacks, the tips. And also from my side also, I, I have that you have to be calm, you have to be composed. If you don't know something, that is completely fine. You're a human. You, there are things that you can't know, but keep that smile and say that, sir, I don't know this. Can you ask something else? I am not aware of this. But yes, you cannot keep on saying that for every question. One or two is fine. And again, the important thing which I said is the pizza base. So the knowledge should be very crisp and clear and accurate. That is very important. So I think these are the things which will help you in cracking an interview. We have a question for you <clears throat> from Professor Shobhan Nandi, again from the Calcutta campus. Do situations okay. like lockdowns scale mm -hmm. up your sales substantially? If so, which categories? Uh, yes, lockdown actually had uh, some devastating effects initially, but again, we have all started to take to live in this new life of normal. So uh, uh, for Amazon, and if I'm talking about my profile, then lockdown actually did not have any impact in our sales because I was into the uh, online part of marketing, the affiliate part of marketing. So for me, the marketing was always online. So lockdown did not actually hamper my sales. It actually increased it. So our work volume started shooting up. But again, if I go to the offline part, like um, there are also uh, companies who are selling offline products. So uh, I believe that initially there was a setback for them, but now again, companies have started investing heavily on social media channels, like on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, they're promoting their products. They are holding live webinars on uh, different social media handles and they're promoting their products. And in this way, they are coping up with the new normal. And yes, the sales are still on. It did not suffer. Initially, there was a setback, but again, everything is coming to normal. The insurance company is in, uh, in, a, in a good position. The pharmaceuticals are in a good position. Uh, if you talk about the consumer durables and apparels and clothing. So I give you an example over here. I'm living in Bangalore. So in Bangalore, uh, uh, what is happening in pandemic when we are not able to go out, Stores like Pantaloons, Wills Lifestyle, they're coming into the apartment with a huge van and selling their products. So these are the new techniques so which companies are coming up with. Again, they're setting up stalls in apartments like Domino's is setting up a pizza counter or McDonald's is setting up a uh, online counter in uh, a counter in, in all the apartments. So in this way, companies are adapting the new culture and trying to find out ways and out to cope up with this new normal and uh, they are successful to all the extent i believe i think that's a very good uh, way to end our session you know you talk about a crisis and how to look at a crisis so, i mean whether to look at a crisis and be stumped or to look at a crisis and see the various new ways in which it can be mitigated and in fact had there not been this crisis this new thinking would not have probably been developed you know the, it's great to hear that you know apparel stores are actually bringing truckloads of uh, their clothes clothing to the venues to apartment blocks and i think that's a that's a fantastic way of looking at things and how people are not uh, getting stumped or not getting uh, demotivated by the crisis anymore they are now looking at it in how to combat and new ways to combat new it. ways of marketing techniques are evolving and that is very nice yeah i think that's a very good way to end this session also and it's great and we loved your pizza uh, analogy <laughs> it's very profound. okay we will all have pizza tonight <laughs> we will all order and have i pizza. think uh, the bomkesh and third eye was absolutely brilliant that thank you really thank brilliant you. yes thank you and to, it was great to have with you uh, to have you in this session and uh, over to you Brita. I was just going to say it's so wonderful to know that something that you have thought of Bomkesh and Third Eye is now being used globally and you're the one who's done it brilliant I'm so very proud of you.
thank, thank you, you everybody thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much everybody thank you all the attendees uh, please uh, be present in our subsequent from campus to corporate leaders webinar series